Ladies and gentlemen, the countdown has begun. In a few hours from now, United States will witness a sitting president and a former president face off against each other for the first time in a presidential election. 81-year-old President Joe Biden and his predecessor, 78-year-old Donald Trump, will face a huge national audience at about 6.30 a.m. IST. Now, many are expecting a deja vu of the 2020 debate between the two, but here's how it will be different this time around. High-tech microphones of the candidates will be muted when one of them is speaking. If the mic of a candidate is off, but he still tries to talk or interrupt the opponent, his voice will not be audible to the viewers watching them on television. The debate will have two commercial breaks, and the campaign staff are not allowed to interact with them. A coin toss that Biden's team won gave him a choice to determine either who gets to make the closing argument or where the candidates stand on the stage. The president's team chose his position on stage, selecting the right side, which means Trump will close the night with his arguments. No props or pre-written notes will be permitted on the stage. Both leaders will be provided with a pen, a pad of paper, and a bottle of water. If we talk about the issues, the state of the American economy, illegal immigration, rise in violent crimes, inflation, healthcare cost, abortion, and perhaps the biggest has been the two wars, American involvement in them and their impact on American campuses and students. Apart from this, Biden's age, Trump's outbursts, the cases against them and their families are some other concerns. So here's the question. Can Biden Trump Trump? Can Donald Trump tone down? Can the two come clean out of their criminal records? Let's try and get a perspective on what is expected tonight. On the show, I'm joined by Saurabh Shukla. He is a senior journalist and editor of News Minute. And I'm also joined by Ray Locker. He is a senior journalist and author. Good evening and namaskar to both of you. Ray, let me start with you. What are you expecting today? Fireworks, is it? Well, I think they've done some things with the format of this debate that's going to limit this from turning into what happened in 2020. I think it's great that you're going to have no studio audience and the mics will be cut off that hopefully that limits some interruptions and where people can actually get a chance to see whether these people can think on their feet and not rely on canned responses or on audience interaction. I mean, this kind of goes back to the format 64 years ago in the first uh, John Kennedy, Richard Nixon debates, which kind of set off this whole trend of candidate debates. And um, I think it probably plays in President Biden's favor somewhat. Hmm. Uh, Saurabh, what are you expecting? There have been a lot of concerns uh, regarding illegal immigration, regarding abortion. Protests have, uh, you know, gripped U.S. campuses as well. Lots to talk about. But what are your top three points that you're looking for that's going to garner a lot of attention and the most attention in today's debate? Uh, Shreya, thank you. And uh, since we're talking about facts, just to correct, I'm editor-in-chief of newsmobile.in, uh, coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Yes. You know, I, I stand I corrected. Say, My apology. Yeah, yeah it's all right. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm very hopeful that this uh, debate will set out the agenda in the front of the American voters uh, of what this election is all about. Is this election about... Uh, what uh, Donald Trump has been speaking about or his presidency or President Biden's work that has happened. Uh, clearly, issues like illegal immigration, economy, will be highlighted by Donald Trump. Uh, on, on President Biden's plate, he has been uh, preparing with his aides, not very far away from where I am, you know, in... Uh, uh, in Camp David, he 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 will be focusing on the fact that under uh, you know President Biden, you have a presidency which has obviously made sure that democracy is at the center of uh, the U.S. Uh, presidency, and also uh, uh, he will certainly highlight what the horrors of insurrection of January six uh, brought to the fore. He will. He may also talk about uh, Donald uh, Trump's uh, you know conviction, uh, even though uh, sources telling me that you know that's something which they were still debating whether he will bring it up. But uh, he's largely going to talk about his own successes and what has really happened. Uh, you know, I think which is which may help him is that his 
uh, the whole plank of illegal immigration in which Donald Trump was trying to uh, put uh, pressure on President Biden, uh, that uh, has come down uh, since, mm. uh, you know, his uh, moves uh, on the border. So that's something which goes in the favor of President Biden at this moment. But it remains to be seen uh, who performs better because, you know, this debate, especially in a critical election, yeah. when... Uh, you have swing states which are very, very tightly, uh, you know, contested. The election debate can make a difference that we are all hoping to see who's going to perform better uh, tonight, Shreya. Yeah, sure. Uh, Ray, you know, what's also interesting is that on the point of immigration, uh, these are these, this is a survey by the Pew Research Center where they've compared issues uh, and who has the edge in these issues, it's whether it's the Republicans or the Democrats. And Republicans hold advantage on policies that address immigration. That's an interesting point because, uh, you know, whatever pitch Donald Trump has been making, it has seen a lot of criticism, but it also has supporters when it comes to close borders or filtering out illegal immigrants, all of that really playing out uh, this time around. Well, Shreya, I mean, you've always had people who are concerned about immigration. I don't think they're the majority of the American population. And their reaction is they see a changing country demographically. They don't like it. Whether they actually see act the effects of illegal immigration in their homes, probably they don't. Um, I mean, you see Ill illegal immigration in these border communities where you have large concentrations of people you know, they're going across the border and then they enter into the community and they're doing jobs that people don't want and they are providing economic stimulus in those communities. Um, that's really what happens a lot with immigration. But what you have with Trump is he is stimulating a reaction against brown and black people coming to the United States from different parts of the world who speak different languages and he's stoking the fears of his base. And that resonates with a lot of people in this country, unfortunately, and it has for years. I mean, from the very founding of the United States, people have been afraid of people who look different than them or sound different or come from different places. So that's what Trump does. And it doesn't really have anything to do with specific policies. Mm. And I guarantee you, he probably couldn't name any of his specific policies. And if you remember to what he talked about in 2016, it was build the wall and we'll make Mexico pay for it. Well, it didn't happen. And so if he was so great on illegal immigration, he might have solved it, but he didn't because he really doesn't have any ideas other than to bang the drum on what strange people look like. But can I also come in here, Ray, and tell you that, uh, you know, it's all very well to say uh, that perhaps Donald Trump wouldn't be able to name any of the policies and that he doesn't have a vision regarding this. But if I go by what, uh, you know, I see on the Pew Research Center and their survey, a majority of the American public do, does not approve of Joe Biden's performance so far. It's about 62 percent. And they don't approve of him as the president and his performance in the past few years. How does that then make him different from Donald Trump? Well, he's different in terms of his demeanor and his personal conduct and the fact that he hasn't been convicted of 34 felony counts. Um, he's what most normal people would think they'd want in a president versus Trump, you know, who by the way, has never won the popular vote in this country. He lost by 2.9 million votes in 2016. He lost by 7 million votes in 2020. He wants you to think he's overwhelmingly popular and that the presidency was stolen from him, but that's not the case. And the only reason he got elected were because of the peculiarities of the U.S. electoral law in 2016, and that's the only reason he kept it close in 2020. If it would have been a straight-up popular vote, he never would have gotten hmm. near 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's interesting, Ray, that you say that, uh, um, you know, Joe Biden has not been convicted uh, in uh, in uh, any criminal case. But Saurabh, his son, Hunter Biden, has been charged uh, with gun possession and lying. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this earlier when this case came up and, uh, you know, how it wouldn't perhaps have such a significant impact 
when it comes to voter concerns. But clearly, in this debate, Donald Trump will use this as a point to take Joe Biden down. Absolutely, he may. And, you know, Donald Trump is known to come up with uh, anything. In fact, personal attacks is something he has done it in the past. And the Biden campaign has been, uh, you know, preparing the president for this. But I would say that uh, responding to your earlier question that why is Joe Biden, uh, you know, behind in certain polls, I would say the Biden campaign in some ways, while they have really conveyed uh, a sense on some of the issues, like economy, on immigration, on skilled immigration, uh, the Trump campaign did a very smart thing where by prepping him where he announced recently that he will give a green cards to any U.S. Uh, you know, graduate coming out uh, of a U.S. university. Yeah. Practically, that may not be possible, but it resonates. I've been talking to a lot of Asian American voters and post that there is a groundswell. Biden campaign has to do something urgently to address the skilled immigration immigrants because what really it does is they may not be voters, but they impact a lot of voters who are their families, who are the relations, who are already who are voters in these swing states, which they haven't done. So I would say that on some okay. of the critical issues, the Biden campaigns really have to ramp up and they are hoping that at this debate because this debate is happening uh, much uh, earlier than the pre any previous debate. So their hope is that they will be able to address yeah. some of these key issues because there's still some months to go for the election and president still has time to issue, uh, you know, executive orders on many mm. issues, you know, which are there to allay uh, that skilled immigration issue and also to distinguish the whole bogey that Donald Trump has okay. been, uh, you know, uh, you know, using uh, to, uh, you know, uh, drum up support on the immigration issue, Shreya. Okay. Quickly, before I wrap up, Ray, I also want to understand from you the two wars that have happened. They have had a significant impact on ground in the United States, especially the Israel-Hamas war, uh, where you've seen American campuses completely divided, students protesting. All of that, is it transitioning into... Uh, you know, Americans going out and voting against this particular government? Because remember, Americans also realized that during the Donald Trump time, there were no wars. At least that, that is something that, you know, that administration might be credited with. But during the Biden administration, we've seen two wars. Well, they weren't started by the Biden administration. They were started by Vladimir Putin, a uh, bloodthirsty well, but there dictator is involvement of Russia, of the United and States, Hamas, clearly. a terrorist organization. Perhaps I not mean, direct Tr involvement. Well, yeah. Trump can say, well, it wouldn't have happened if I had been president. And that remains to be seen. Um, Trump would do nothing differently in the Middle East than Biden has done. He would let Israel do whatever it wants. And we would still see those campus demonstrations because they would be protesting against a continued genocide against people in Gaza. Um, in terms of Ukraine, Trump is not okay. on the majority side in that. I mean, he wants to basically let Putin do whatever and let a sovereign nation fall under the domination of Russia. So I think Biden would welcome those hmm. questions and those contrasts. I think he has majority of people on their side. And when you talk about the divisiveness in the Democratic Party in regards to uh, the Middle East, we saw on Tuesday in the 16th Congressional District in New York, where a basically a pro-Palestinian mm. congressman yeah. was absolutely wiped out by his challenger in that Democratic primary. So I don't know mm. how strong those divisions are, really. I know they're very visible, and the people are vocal, and they okay. raise issues that need to be raised. I just don't know if they're resonating electorally right now. Okay. Uh, and Shreya, right, if I, I can quickly add... I have time. I'll have to wrap it up here. Sort of... Okay. Just, just quick... Sort of apologies. Quick I have to wrap up. I have paucity okay. of time. Okay. And I'm okay. sure we have, we have a lot to talk about uh, in this. It's going to be interesting how it pans out. Let's wait and watch what the two leaders say. But I'll wrap it up here. Saurabh Shukla and Ray Locker, thank you very much to both of you gentlemen for joining us on Nation tonight and helping us understand what is expected in this first phase-off between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Thank you very much to both of you.